Dr. Matas, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, share your presentation, please. Okay, one moment. Can you see my screen? Yes, now I see it. Okay. Let me introduce myself first. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zaria Shams. I'm a student member on the organizing team at IEEE KFUBM student branch. Thank you all for attending this webinar. And I, th and I thank the Signal Processing Society for their collaboration with us to organize this webinar. And a special thanks to Dr. Mu'taz Al-Farraj and Mrs. Marwa. Also, now, now I am greeting Dr. Mu'taz Saad that will present this webinar now, and I'm giving the mic to him. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you so much for uh, give me the chance to uh, for this uh, workshop, which is about Think in Python. And uh, to introduce myself, my name is Mota Sard, and I am an assistant professor working in several universities in Palestine. And I also uh, am working as a data scientist uh, consultant for uh, several companies remotely. And uh, I hold a PhD from University of Florian, France, and I was working there also as a researcher for uh, four years in Loria Lab. And I'm glad uh, uh, to, to be with you today to talk about Python. Okay, so here. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so the, 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 today it's like uh, day one, we will introduce Python. Uh, so we will talk about why Python, what are the tracks of Python and Python a, a, a programming environment and how to speak in Python. Okay, so um, let me first um, define a, the programming language. And it's like I prefer to provide my definition. It is a philosophical definition. So programming language is uh, a thinking tool that you can use to realize your ideas. So it's like we as uh, like working in several domains, we have so many ideas and uh, so the programming language is a great tool to realize your ideas. And um, in fact, Python is a language like other any human language like English, French, Spanish, uh, that uh, uh, we use it to speak to machines. We didn't reach uh, now to a level that um, uh, 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 machines can understand our language. Okay, so they understand what we need uh, perfectly. So we need to learn their language. So that's why we need programming language to speak to machines, to tell them what to do. Okay, so a programming language is uh, something that um, um, yeah, that uh, that you can learn as uh, as uh, yeah, any uh, natural language, and uh, in fact, to be fluent in Python, you should practice Python uh, and speak Python every day. Okay, now we come to the technical definition of Python. In fact, Python is an easy language. So it's designed to be an easy uh, language. And the, the design philosophy, it's something like that. Okay, we need a programming language that is very uh, easy to learn. And uh, it's like the design philosophy. It's like uh, um, uh, when you design something that is really easy for the users. So that, that was the purpose. And uh, in fact, Python is uh, a high level language on plus on, it's like, plus it's open source and it's uh, portable. 
you can run it in any platform, Windows, Mac, Linux, even mobile devices. It's an interpreted language. You will come to this later. And also it's an object, uh, object oriented language. It's ex extensible. That means that you can wrap any piece of code written for instance in, in C and you can wrap it with Python and vice versa. So you can extend the language and mix it with other languages. And it has a large standard libraries that will make it so attractive uh, in many domains. So you will find people, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, it's like their domain is astronomy, astronomy and they, uh, it's like there is uh, a dedicated libraries for them, Python libraries for them. Also, uh, it's, it's like scientist, physician, uh, um, any domain, mathematicians, uh, you will find a lot of libraries for those people. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the thing that make it very attractive language. Okay, so the, the uh, popular programming language in 2020, 2021, as you see in, in 2020, Python was in the top. The second was JavaScript. 2020, it's like first was JavaScript and second is, is Python. And uh, it's like if we consider the Git, GitHub, uh, GitHub st uh, languages uh, statistics, we will find, uh, you, you will see that JavaScript is first, then is Python. So it's like in, in all these statistics in, in, 2000, in, in 2020, 2021, so Python is in the first or in the second place. In fact, there's, there are so many uh, uh, language indices that we can rank the popularity of the programming language, like this one, uh, Toby. Uh, in fact, uh, Toby is the uh, tracks uh, the the twenty five search engine hits, including Google, Wikipedia, YouTube, and other. And you have here the lists like in the top, Python. Uh, sorry, in the top is C, Python, and Java. And you you have here another index is BYBL. Uh, uh, in fact, this index uh, uh, tracks the search for tutorials uh, uh, using Google Trend. So the, the, the most common tutorials, you, you will find it in Python. Redmonk index, it's this, this, is, this one is different uh, because you have an expert collect information from the developers or the programmers themselves. And you, you have here like the list of the programming language they used for the development and you have in the second place, uh, Python. Okay, but well, what I wanted to see uh, to say that is, uh, okay, Python is very popular language. You will find it like besides JavaScript because JavaScript, you can use it in web and uh, it's like the popularity of uh, websites is that that's why it make it so much popular JavaScript. So it's besides JavaScript is so popular. Uh, uh, that's the uh, JetBrain survey. And JetBrain is uh, like the, this company provides uh, many um, IDEs. So uh, the, it's like what is the primary programming language? JavaScript, then Java, then Python. So it's in the top. Uh, common languages. Okay, now we will come to the tracks uh, of Python. But what we, what you can do with Python? You have a great tool, the, the, the Python. What you can do with Python? In fact, uh, according to this survey, Python developer survey result, results, it's uh, it's um, conducted by JetBrains. It's for 2020. 2021 is not released yet. So you see like in the top, Python is used for data analysis. Then at the second place, uh, web development, then machine learning. In fact, these, drop, uh, these uh, three domains uh, it's like are the most uh, domains that, uh, that, uh, that the most, it's like the, the most popular tracks for Python. 
So in other words, it's like when you learn Python, you have two tracks. You can use it for web development or you can uh, it's like use it for data science, machine learning, AI, uh, data visualizations, all these systems. Okay. Uh, in fact, here you have here a lot, like a list of the famous website that was built using Python. You have Instagram, you have Pinterest, Netflix, Oopr. It's like people know this these uh, applications and these social networks, but in fact, they don't they didn't know that it's like it was made by Python. Okay, you have this popular social network Reddit, and you have the drop, the Dropbox, the web, the web application. It was made by Python. And uh, okay, so now we re we realize that it's like Python is popular. You can you can have two tracks, either as we say, the web developer or a data scientist. Now we want to know it's like. Uh, what is the Python programming language? In, in fact, you have so many options. Like option one, you can install pure Python from python.org. And then later you install uh, packages as needed, okay? And uh, the second option is to use or to install a uh, pre-packaged platforms like Anaconda or WinPython. The third option is to use or to run a Python code on the cloud platforms. And option four, to use uh, Docker, Docker containers. Okay. So uh, uh, like according, it's like from my experience, I, I would recommend you the, to use option number two, which uh, more particularly to use Anaconda because it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy to use, we, we will see. In fact, Anaconda support Windows and Mac and Linux. So regardless of the, of the machine that you, you use, you, you have um, an installation package for uh, Anaconda for it. And it supports so many pre-installed packages like Cybee, like Jupyter, Scikit-learn, Pandas, NumPy, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Matt, uh, 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 you know, Matplot uh, libraries, all these are pre-installed. So you don't need to struggle and install these. It comes pre-installed with Anaconda. And you have here the Anaconda Navigator. And as you see, it's like I will show you later on my machine. It's like because we will do practical work uh, like uh, today in day one. You have here in the, it's like in the home, you have uh, it's like the environments we I have that base environment so you have many up many so many applications connected to this environment so you have the command prompt you have the Jupyter uh, uh, Jupyter lab you have the VS code which is an IDE and you have also by charm uh, it's by charm it's um, also an IDE so it comes all in one you don't need to install the, the VS code separately and PyCharm separately and the command and Jupyter lab separately. So it's come all uh, um, in one package. So that's this is the second tab, the environment. I can create environments as much as I want to develop my applications. For, for instance, on my machine, I have an environment for DN and deep neural network. So I, I install here the packages for deep neural network like TensorFlow and PyTorch. And I have another environment, which is a, a NLP, as you see here. So in NLP, I have packages like uh, Cybe, uh, uh, Spacey, like NLTK. And I also have an environment for web development. So I develop web applications and uninstall packages related to uh, web development like Flask. Okay, uh, now it's like we, I'll, I'll talk about the Python environments. In fact, you can write code in IDE or in Shell or in Jupyter Notebook. So I will start one by one. 
So let me share my whole screen. Okay, do, do you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So I'm, run, I'm running the Anaconda Navigator. Yes, so it's here. Okay, and it's like in the root base, I can launch the VS code. So that's the first option. The first option is to run code within the IDE. So I will launch the VS code. I have the VS code installed. If it is in, not installed, for instance, here is uh, it's like I have this package. You, you just need to press install and it will ins install it for you automatically. So just let me close this project and open a new one. Okay, so I can create here. Yeah. A file we can like allow.py with this extension and just write print hello world. Okay, so I just need to run this. So here I can write a bunch of lines and run it and execute it all at once. Okay, so in this case, uh, it's like in this option, you write your Python all your Python code here. Okay, so let me just, okay, x is two, y equal three, three, and it's like z, x plus y. And it's like your friend, the value of z, Okay, so I just run it here. And we, I have here the option. It's like hello world and Z is five. So when I just click on this button, you like you have the environment will execute the whole uh, the, the whole file. It's like from line one to five all at once. That's the first option. The second one is to run Python code within shell. So I have here the shell. Okay, so once you have Anaconda installed, you just need to type here, like Python. And you have here, like the ID LE Python. So that's an interactive shell. So this shell will take the code from me line by line, and it will execute it line by line. For instance, I can run this code, it's like run this line, enter this line, x equal three. Okay, so it's executed. I can see the value of x, print x, because the previous line was executed, so I have it here. So that's the second environment that you can run the Python code in it. And I think the most, it's like common way Maybe for you, it's like you have the whole code here and you run it at once. But I think this, maybe it's a new for you and it's really useful. It's really useful, for instance, when you want to uh, show something or like test something, it's an easy way to do that. For instance, we have um, the function range in, in Python. So I can just range. 
B. What does that mean? Okay, so it's it's an a range object like this to show the range. That means it it will generate uh, numbers, a sequence of numbers from zero up to three to show that. So, so I can convert it to list list range zero or three directly. So you see. So it's a list. It's a sequence of numbers, zero, one, two, three numbers. So that's generated three, three numbers from zero to two. It's like I can repeat that. And, and so it's a sequence of numbers from zero up to nine. Okay, so that's an easy way to see and to try things in Python within the Python shell. Uh, so, like, it's really useful when you develop the code. And the third option is to use Jupyter Notebook. And in fact, this tool is really great. It's the most, it's the greatest programming tool that you can ever use. Why? <clears throat> because you can write code and notes in one place. And also you can uh, you can save the results also in the same notebook. So you don't need to run it again. And you can split the code into cells. So for instance, if we come back here, it's like, oh, okay. It's like, imagine that I have here 100 line, but only I want to repeat these two lines. Within the Python notebook, I can just execute two of these lines if I put it in one cell. I will show you how. So if we back here to the navigator and here in the Jupyter lab, you can create notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, just click on launch and you will have something like this. Okay. So here is my environment. This is my home directory. So I can go, for instance, to desktop. Okay, and I can create my Python notebook here. So I can create, so it's a web-based application as you see. Okay, and it runs locally in my machine. So I can run Python code here. I can launch a console. I can open a file and do so many things. So I would open up a notebook, so it's untitled, so I can rename it here. So notebook one. Okay, so we have here cell, cells. For instance, I can click print hello. Let me change to the presentation mode, show line numbers. Okay, so now it's much bigger, so you can see it. So if I execute it, it's, you, you see the result directly. I can create another cell, it's like by clicking here. Okay, it can x equal two, y equal three, and execute this. So this cell, it has no output, so it's like, this has an output, this has no output because I don't know, I, 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 I didn't do any output operation. So, sorry, I can just grab this here or, okay. Here I can Z equal X of Y and print Z. So each cell, it's like I can re-execute it without executing the whole notebook. For instance, I can change this to high. So when I just execute, it's like I can press enter, uh, control enter for short, for a, as a shortcut. So I have here high. I didn't re-execute this, just only this note. 
this cell, sorry. Okay, so that's the first advantage. Okay, and the second advantage is that, okay, I save this. Okay, I close it. You see here the result high and it's like the sum result is five. I close it, I reopen it again and voila, you have here it's like the result saved in the notebook. So you don't need to run it again. So in fact, this is like this tool is so great and it's so useful for developers and for students. Okay, in fact, this, these cells are code cell. I can create and another type of cell which it's like I can change the type from here, like as a markdown cell. It's like the markdown cell, it's a markup language. Okay, and you, I can like mark the text. For instance, I, I can tell, okay, this is like, like heading one. If I want to do it's like a, a subheading, I can do double hashes here, like heading two. And you see, it's like, here is the render of this text. So in fact, it's like, if I want to edit it, I can double click on it and I can do, it's like all the stuff, like steps to, like I can do it here as a title here or as a heading, Python. So I can do step number one, download Python, Python work, and the second step to run. So it's like you have it here as a listed, it's like as a listed numbers. I can change it to an ordered list like this. And you can see the render. And it's like, okay, I will just stop here for markdown. If you want to uh, see more, it's like you just try it, like markdown, it, it. So you will have all the references. If you want to do heading, you do like so. If you want to do bold, you do like so. Italic like so. It's like all this to document your code and I will do it for you. It's like for our exercise, I, I, I will do it for you, okay? And okay, so that's, that's the, the, like you have the notes and you have the code and you have the results on all in, in one place. Okay. Okay. Um, if, you, if, you, if you don't want to struggle with uh, Anaconda, it's like I can, I can, uh, Anaconda, as I said, it's like, it's, it's my recommendation for you. It's an easy tool to, if you want to have a Python environment and install it. And, and it's like, it's available for all the platform. If you don't want to struggle and run and install Python environment in, on your machine, you can try to use or to run Python on the cloud. And you have here so many options. You have the Google Cloud, Kaggle, Replit, Microsoft Azure Notebooks, Binder. Okay. It's like I will give you just one example on this. And it's like you can do, you can use, uh, it's like you can try the rest by yourself. Okay. And uh, As uh, like as you want, if you want to to uh, uh, to uh, it's like regarding the questions. If you want to have a questions, it's like now during the presentation, it's fine for me. If you want to have it at the end, it's okay.
um, it's like, okay, I will give it's like provide my contact number at the end of the presentation. There is a question about like my contact. I, I, I can provide my, the, the, my contact at the end of the presentation. Okay. So it's like when you whenever you have a question, you just hit the QA button and you write your question there. Okay. So let's continue. And uh, yes. So it's, it's like all of these. It's like it's the same as notebook. You have here this Jupyter notebook. Okay, it's locally. You can run it locally, but it's like for these, it's like all every every it's like platform of these. It has its own uh, its own um, uh, uh, version of uh, of not or of the notebook. So first, let let's try collab Google collab. You just search Google Collab and you will have it at the first search result. And I choose here to create a new notebook. In fact, you can like grab notebooks from your Google Drive or you can have it from GitHub. You just enter here the URL. For me, I just, I want to create a new notebook. So I just can rename it here. It's like workshop day one. And as you see here, it's like you have, you can create a silk code and a text code. Text code is the markdown. So it's like, okay, this is, it's like code silk and hello. You connect here. In fact, Google provide you like an instance of a computing instance. It's uh, it's uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I think uh, it's 50 gigabytes of hard disk, and it also provides you a GPU. So you can use this for experimentation. But it's, it's like the the instance can can be live uh, or up alive for uh, for 12 hours i think okay so i can just have it here as you see it's like it's like I, if i put most mouse all over here or from here it's like okay i choose here to create a text and it's like i okay it's like python variables okay And it's like, as you see, this is a note. So it's like, okay, you know what what is what what is does this? Uh, it's like, what is uh, what is it about this cell? It's like, okay, you can write x equal ten, then x like this. Okay, so it's it's the same. You have the code and the cell. It's like the text. And and uh, Kaggle, it's the same. I think it's like it's the same environment, but it's like the difference here in Kaggle. You can enter competition. You can it's like use data from there. But for Google Drive, it's like you have you only have option here to uh, to connect your. It's like you have. Uh, to connect you to your Google Drive, or you can download data from internet. Okay, here. And like Microsoft Azure notebook, it's the same, it's the same notebook. Binder, it's the same. Replit, it's a little bit different because you can have something like notebook and, and uh, the IDE, but in the web. So it's like, I will provide you with these slides so you can try it yourself. And it's like, it's an easy way if you don't want to uh, like struggle with Python installation and uh, you can try it. You can play with Python on the cloud. 
Okay, so it's like in the second half of the, of the workshop, we will talk about variables and naming convention, conditional statements, error and exception handling, function and naming convention, convention, uh, naming convention again. And we will talk about the best practices for writing Python functions. And hopefully, it's like we can reach to loops and iterations. We will do that so fast. So I hope that you follow up with me. And and yes. Uh, okay, let's start first by variables. In fact, it's like okay, I can delete this one. And yes that's Python variables. In fact, in Python, you don't need to define variables. Like we have the primitive data type, which is int, load, and str, three types, and Boolean, four types. Okay. And you don't need to like provide the type of the variable because as we said, Python is designed to be easy, so don't struggle. It's like don't it's like don't um, it's like waste your time to define that. Okay, that's integer, like because the Python interpreter will know the the type from the value. Okay, so I print x, and I also I can show you how Python can determine the type from from the value. So I can print type of X. So as you see here, the value is 10 and the type is integer. How it knows that's an integer because it's like this value is an integer. And if, if, if we like change and we define Y, we print the value and we print the type of y, but here we bought 10.7. So here is the value, but here the type is, is float. Okay, so that's the thing in, in Python uh, uh, types. So it's like, okay, name equal Ahmed and print type of name. So that's str, okay? So that's, that's the variable. So just write the name of the variable and write the value. It's like, it will know automatically the type. The second point that I will talk about is the naming convention. It's an important, not only in Python, but in all programming language, don't use this, it's like X and Y. This is meaningless. You need names, variable names. You need to choose a variable name that you can, you can remember. For instance, if I just type here X equal 100, I can do a comment here, by the way, it's like in the code cell, it's like by this hash sign. So this is, this name is bad. Add name. Okay, but what I can do is this like okay, car speed equal 100. So that's good name. Okay, so always choose noun phrase or nouns for your variable name. So everyone read this line of code. He will know that, okay, it's like the car speed is 100, but here it's like, okay, X is 100, but what is X? I don't know. Okay. Okay, now we switch to conditional statements in Python. Everything is fine here. It's like up till now. Everything is okay. Yes, 
like, okay, I will take some questions. Can we import codes from Jupyter uh, to Colab? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, um, is there a double precision? No, it is not. It's everything is float. Okay. There is a question about the, like the type float. Is there a double precision in Python? And how to declare it? You don't need to declare it. You have it. You you only we you only have a float type. Okay. And the like it depends on the value. It can be like a float or it's like a double precision um, uh, float. Uh, it's like, it depends on the value, but it's all called float in Python. And regarding how we can import code uh, from Jupyter to Colab, here you click on file and you click on upload a notebook. Okay, that question. So that's answer was live. Okay, done, done. And, and yes, we have here an answer. Okay, it's like regarding the slides, I, I think the, um, the session, uh, the, the panel list will take care of, of this. It's like I will deliver the slides for them and they can provide you the slides. Okay, so let's come back here to conditional statement and I will make a new heading here. And okay, no, I need to do a text heading, uh, sorry. Conditional state. Okay, in fact, in Python, we need to understand one thing. One important thing is if you want to define a block, you know, you need to use the indentation. Okay, for instance, you have, I have this code, it's like x equal to five. If x is greater than two, like these two sentences belong belongs to the if statement. Why? Because of the intendation. In Python, we don't we don't have uh, like um, uh, brackets for the beginning and the, for the end of the code, or for, for for the end the beginning and the end of the uh, the block of the code. So you need to do that by indentation. Okay, so I can do that here. Like, okay, I can define x equal five. And if x greater than two, so as you see here, it's like it's highlighted here. I highlighted for you that this indentation. Okay, print x, x is, Five. Sorry, two. Another statement. I just want to do multiple statements that belongs to X. Yeah, X is large. Okay. Back. When, when it's like whenever I press enter, it's like I am in the same intendation. If I want to come back here, I just say, okay, print. Um, so line three and four are conditional statements. They are conditional because they are, they are executed based on this condition. Okay, so it's like if you run this code, you will see that line three and four are executed and it's like line five, it's always executed. But if we made, it's like I, will, I can copy because here I want the result saved to you. That's, that's why notebook is so important because 
it's like you have the result here as are, are saved so i can but it's uh, so you will have only line five executed okay so in fact this is considered as one way decision we can do it's like two way decisions it's what if the value is true and what if the value is false not the value sorry the condition so i can type else and you see here it's like with the colon i can define a scope whenever i press enter so i can say print like x is just any statement okay so line number six it always executed because doesn't belong to the if or else block but line five line two three are conditionals it's based on the condition so that's the two-way conditions like either this way or this way in fact this is like x is uh, smaller than two and what I mean by else, what is meant by else, it's, it means that X should be greater than or equal to. So it's the opposite, by the way. Okay, so it's like here, it's not executed, but once we have else, it's ex executed. So the value of X is five and done is executed. So that's the multi-way decision, uh, sorry, the two-way decision. We can do a multi-way decision by doing like if, elf, else. So we can do something like this. If Okay, I can do it greater than two. Like I can do something like this, x is large, we already have it here, and else, I can type here if again, but why, why that, it's like, whenever we use the language, we, it's like, we, we, we usually like to use the shortcuts, so to use the shortcuts, we can use like elf. Elf, it means else if. Okay, now it's like if we arrive here, it's like uh, like yeah, um, x is greater than two, and elf here we can. It should be smaller than two, but we can check if if x below zero and type x negative and here like else and x. So this is multi-way and you can do F, elf, 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 elf as you want, but the last statement should be else, okay? So this else to this F, and it's like you see all the intendation, it's the same idea. Okay, since X is greater than two, so it's large when I, it's, zero sorry just like not define the value x equal zero and if i put something like minus five it will print x is negative like this
Okay, we have a question about and and or. Okay, let me take this question first. Uh, okay, I can just type it here. Like, okay, we have like, like I can provide an input. So x equal, like, let's take it like this. Like we need to pass it to integer because this function input, like it takes like the, 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 the input from the keyboard as a string. So enter a number. So in fact, this is the message that will appear to the user. You take it as a string and you we, we pass it to this end function. It's like, and I print here if x it's like greater than 10 and x less than 20, I just print x is between 10 and Okay, so let's uh, try this. It's like I need to enter a number here. If I press, uh, if I enter, for instance, 13, it's like I have this statement will be printed. Okay, like I can do else print out of range. Range is ten to twenty. Okay, so that's seven. It's out of range. Fifteen. It's between ten and twenty. And it's like I can do or. Okay, so it's like I can do a condition like uh, if x equal equal ten or equal equal twenty. Okay, so this is the or. So you can type and an or like this. So it's okay, 10. It's either 10 or 20. If we it's like enter something, like it's not 10 or 20. So you can do and and or like this in your condition. And we have another questions are the intendation based on the based on the number of spaces? Yes, in fact, it's um, it's four spaces, but you need to to uh, it's like if 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 I want if you come here to your cursor, okay, and if you come back here, you just need to press tab. Sorry, tab to to reach it's like it's it's four spaces, but you can do that with the tab, okay. Uh, it's like the IDE will do that for you, so don't worry. Like the 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 collab or the Jupyter notebook or the VS Code will do will do that for you. Okay. And uh, you can nest the spaces. Uh, you, sorry, you can nest indentation. It's no, no, it's not single space, but you can nest indentation. You can nest the scopes. It's like, as you see here in the slide, okay? So this, it's like this square, as you see, it's it's a block, okay? Because of this intendation, this and this, okay? But we have here four, and you have here the scope for four, and all these lines belong to the four. But we also have here a condition, and this statement, 
is another block. So it's a block inside another block. The block of F is inside the block of four. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. And you are welcome. There is no switch statement in Python. Yes, there is no switch. Okay. Okay, so we finished conditional statements. We will move to error handling. Um, but we reached to the end of the session. It's like, can we stay more? Engineer Marwa or the... Yes, doctor, go ahead. Yes, we can stay, no problem. Okay, regarding the error and exception handling, let's move. Okay. And in fact, and the exceptions in, in Python is, uh, is it's like you want, you don't want to interrupt the execution of the program. For instance, you can, it's like we do an input as we did here, okay? Okay, and, uh, okay, I can, I need to stop this and print the value of x. So I can enter 10, like I have 10 printed, but when I enter here, and like this, we have a problem because this method end can parse only digits between zero and nine, a sequence of digits between zero and nine as a string, yes, but it cannot parse letters. So we will have here a problem. As you see here, we have the execution interrupted. So to prevent this interruption, it's like we will kindly ask Python to try this line of code, okay and to print, as you see here, I created a scope with this colon and I it's like made intendation for these two lines, line two and, and three. And I can handle the exception here, okay? And it's like, I can type and like print. Value. Numeric value, it means with numbers, not with letters. Okay, so that's a friendly message to the users. So, like when I write five, Like I have this gentle message to save these enter a numeric value and the execution is not interrupted. For instance, if I just put here done, okay, this will execute. So if we do that again, five, please enter a numeric value and like line seven is executed. So the execution was not interrupted. So you can handle this exception like this. And in fact, you can handle so many exceptions. So for instance, it's uh, 
let's let's come back here again and to see what kind of error of wood that we can have. If we enter five, we have this value error. So I can just copy this error. In fact, this is this is an, an exception class in Python. I can just write it here. It's like whenever you have a value error, you just print this message. And I can do another exception except zero division error. I can just print control space to have the suggestion. That's all the IDE that have it. Okay, and I print slide print and zero. Like I can take another input, which is y, and I will try to uh, like yeah. Uh, X divided by Y. Okay, so we have so many exceptions here. So if, for instance, I can just press five, enter five. So I have this error message like, please enter a numeric value. Okay, I, I understand I need to enter numbers, not letters. So I run again and I press I enter 10, the second number, y, I can enter five. Okay, it's, a, it's like it do the division, but if I, it's like out, sorry, I want to do that, repeat that in another, just to have this saved, I can save. I will share the notebook with you later, okay? So I will run again and I will divide 10 by zero. We have here the, the, the another exception, it's like it was catched here at line seven and you have this error message, gentle error message cannot divide by zero here, okay? So that's the exception handling. Okay, and like we can we can like do the function and the best practices for function and we can stop because like we will do the iteration tomorrow inshallah. And okay, let me do the functions. So I'll enter another header. Okay, in fact, to define a function in Python, you just need to use the, the word diff for define and write the name of the function. And again, for the name of the function, it's like we need to do the take care or like we need to consider the naming convention. For variables, we need to use noun phrases or nouns. But for functions, we need to use verbs or verb phrases. It doesn't make sense to like have a function named X or has a function that's called car speed. Okay, car speed. But like, what does this function do with the car speed? Does it increase it, decrease it? So it's like we can do like this increase car speed. So that's why, I mean, that's how it becomes um, a noun phrase, uh, sorry, a verb phrase. And it's, it's, it's meaningful. Any developer can read this function. He will understand this function will uh, like speed up. We, it will in increase the car speed, okay? So let's make it for the moment. It takes no argument. And I just like to imitate this. As you see, it's like I defined here the scope of the function. And I print it's like increasing our speed to 
type 100. Okay, we define the function and we run it, but nothing happened. We need to call it. So I can call it like this. You have it like this. Okay. Now let me write a function def uh, my sum. Okay, it will take A and B. And uh, a plus B. And by the way, let's make it some terms to make it verb phrase. And by the way, this is the best to practice. Why? Because you take the, the inputs as our arguments and you return a value. But when you call it, it's like you can call it, need to execute it first, some values and it's like I can try it with two and three, okay? So you have here the output. It's like, by the way, in, in the notebook, when you have like a single line and it has an output, it will produce the output here. It's the same as print. It's the same effect, by the way. And like, I can do this exercise again, but with three and four, but I need to add five to the output. So the output is 12. That means the return value here, it's like I added five to it. That's the best practice. And what is the bad practice? The bad practice, is to define, let's call it some values like version two. It takes no argument, that's the bad practice. And you it's like make the input inside the function, integer input integer a and do the same for B and it's like I print the result A plus B. With this function, in fact, I cannot do anything because you forced you forced me uh, uh, you forced me to enter the values it's like using the keyboard the, the the command line interface. Okay, it's like this is number one. Number two, the second reason is that it's like you always print the result to the console. I cannot take it and sum it. It's like add it to something else or it's like subtract it or do any operation with the output. Yes, it will do the work when you call it. It's like when we call it like this, it will do the work like enter a three, four, and you have the result. But in fact, I, I cannot sum this result of five, for instance, won't work. So we have three, two, it won't work because here 
it's like it returns none and it's like he says that I cannot sum none with integer. So that's the bad practice. Because here, when you pass it, like using uh, the function arguments, in fact, you can pass this argument, it's like you, you can get these values, not necessarily from keyboard, you can get it, for instance, from network, you can get it from a web interface, because you can develop web applications using Python. So it's like you take this input, then you pass it to this argument. It's like taking the input and it's like making it's like it's like make bad practice. It means make I O inside function. This is wrong. Don't do this. Don't do this. Okay. So the best practice, no I O inside the function. Do not do any I O operation inside the function because it will provide provide you flexibility it's like for you and for for your team the other developers that works with you okay so i guess uh, that's the thing regarding the python function i will take the questions Is there a way, there is another question from Bakker. Is there a way to know more about error raised? Yes, you can try it yourself. It's like, okay, I'll try it here. Error Python. In fact, there is a long list. It's like, for, for instance, it's like if, um, if we have a variable called like print color. So did we define this variable before? The Python interpreter will come to you and says, okay, what is color? I don't have this variable. So you will have something called name error. Name error means that you have like an, an error in in, in the variable name, okay? And we have here the type error. When you try to do an operation on different types, like it's like you try to, you try to sum none with integer, that's why it's called type error. And you have the value error. It's like even the error is saved in the notebook. So you will have all these information saved in the notebook by the way the value error like when the when we do uh, it's like uh, casting to integer when i do one two three no problem but, but when i do a b c that's value error that means in this value we have a problem we have error in the value and we have the zero division error and we have the, uh, it's like the value error. So you can have a list, it's like you can Google it, the list of errors in Python, but it's, uh, I, I, I think it's easy. I mean, it's like you can just understand what the, does the error, like what the error uh, means, okay? So that's the question about the error raised. Done. We have another question. Can we use the same variable with different values? Yes. Yes, exactly. So you define x equal to 10, you print it, and you change your mind. You want x. I will change not only the value, I will, I will, it's like I will change also the type. I will use it's like 2.5. It's a float and print X again. And also here I print the type of X and I will repeat this line of code. I will execute it. 
So first you have 10 and in integer, the value is it changed? Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like I need to change this x equal the same variable 2.5. And I run again. So the first value is 10 and it's integer. It's like we change the value and the type. The value is changed to 2.5 and the type was changed to float. Okay. Yes, uh, doctor. Uh, would yeah. you like to continue tomorrow? We don't want to be very long. Yes, yes. I just I have another question. It's like I will take another question from Bakker and uh, we we finish. Uh, the last question from. Okay, you, you need to clarify more about the question. You meant printing the error without knowing beforehand the error. I will please. Um, in, in fact, it's, um, I don't think that you can know the error beforehand. I mean, it's like during debugging, you can uh, like know what kind of errors you have and you try to handle it using try and accept. So that's done. So I answered all the questions and the floor is yours. Yes. That's all from my side for today. And we can continue tomorrow. Brothers in the in the panel list, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. So yes, thank you so much for your attendance today. And uh, that's all from my side for today. And we continue tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you, everybody, and see you tomorrow. See you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.